Hey, I've got something really great to tell you about today, guys. We have two new plating finishes, and they're really versatile. You can do some real neat things with them, change them up and make them your own. We have one called Rusty Black Patina and another one called Chocolate Ox Patina. Um, Chocolate Ox Patina is kind of like your brass ox, but it's kind of chocolatey. It's, there's not as much definition, but you buff that in. You you make your own as much or as little as you want. Rusty black patina is kind of like a matte, brown, black, charcoal-y, gunmetal-y look. And it is amazing because with a sunshine cloth, you can totally change up the entire look of it. And I'm going to show you how to do that. We have some that has come in. You can sample it at bisuboutiques.com. Um, we're going to be having a whole lot more coming in through Jan uh, July and August, so stay tuned on that, and I'll probably show you some more projects. But one thing that I did with the Rusty Ox Patina just today was I reprised a bracelet that I made a long time ago, and I don't know if I ever did it in a video, but it's been on my blog. It's this bracelet that I'm wearing, and I'm going to show you kind of how I did this. This bracelet took me a whole 10 minutes to make. And it's fun, and it's just got a lot of possibilities. And what I like about it is you've got easy off and on here because you can go right in the side, and there's a little less struggle. And it, she said as she fought to get it on, but normally there isn't a lot of struggle. There it is. It's on. So you can put it on without help. But anyway, um, I'm going to have Rob come on over here so I can show you this stuff so you can fall in love with it the way that I have. Okay, so, you know, I'm sure that you didn't get a real good look at that bracelet when I was flashing it in front of your eyes. So, uh, here it is, closer. But you can see how I've really buffed the highlights in. And I'm going to take it off again so you can see how it's just this piece that is rolled on this end and just connected, fit to the top of my wrist. It starts out life like this. And this is your rusty black ox patina when it comes in. Now, at first glance, you'll say, that is a really matte black gunmetal, but you know what? You'd be wrong. It's not. It's kind of that uh, brown black. I think I was mentioning like brown black Maybelline mascara. It's not black and it's not brown. It's got rust undertones, and when you look in the cracks a little bit, you'll see them. But we want to bring them up a little, so here's how we do it. Very simple. You get a sunshine cloth, and if you're not familiar with these, why, it's time. I have sold these for, I don't know, 20 years. They're just the best polishing rag. But what you're going to do is you're just going to go over it by hand. You don't need a Dremel or anything. Look at that. Look what's happening. Look what's happening. See that gloss coming up? Now, if you didn't want gloss over the whole thing, then you could just go over it lightly. But what I'm doing is I'm buffing in highlights. Now, you can see some of that underlying color, that rusty color is coming up, coming up, coming up. Now this is a permanent finish, guys. It's not going to come off all over. I'm just saying, you know, if you want to go after it with a sunshine rag, you can remove a little bit of it, and you can get some highlights in it. Isn't that pretty? Or you could just take and go over it with some Ren Wax, you know, if you did, if you wanted it to be a little glossier. But see the, see the difference now between the two? Can you get up on that close there, Rob? The difference between the two. See? And then bending it is fairly simple. I start by hand. And you kind of have to be careful because the one end uh, wants to bend a little higher than the other, so it's something you have to play with. And right about in this point, you can see, you know, you, you could have a breaking point here if you're not careful. You know? So you just kind of have to go with it and bend it. I like using a bail making pliers, but go careful because you don't want to mark your, your brass. And then at the end, you roll it so that you can put your wire through. Okay, I got it turned, so the rest of it, I'm going to just use my regular pliers to, to finish it and pull it in. And there I go. See, you see that? I've just turned that around over there. So now I have a place to hook in for my jump rings and my uh, toggle. And as you can see, I've mixed up the findings, and that's fine on this, you know, because um, you've got you've got brass ox underneath on this, you've got uh, copper ox glow, so you could put a whole bunch of different colors in this, and it would be just fine. But that's how you bend the end, and then 
if I had a little bit more time on camera, I would just continue to bend this until it was like that, and then I could make another bracelet. And it's real simple. So you could get a bunch of these and bend them. You could apply a little bit of color to them if you wanted to. You know, use different types of chains, change them up, hang a little, some little maybe. I might take a little series of uh, charm keys or something and hang from here, and that would add a little bit of design interest. I might add a little bit more chain, different colors on here, maybe maybe. Instead of just doubling this one piece, maybe put another piece in there, or maybe quadruple it, you know, and make it thicker. But there's just a lot of ways to go. So uh, this piece is on the site. I think we've got like 20 of them, so if you want to grab one, you can. Okay, now, you guys are real familiar with this great big piece, this great big filigree flat. We have it, I think, in like every color and raw, too. But in the, the rusty... Um, black patina, it's awesome. And when you look at the back, you can really see the the rusty accent in the grooves. You can really see that underlying chocolatey, coppery rust. And it's it's truly not black. It's brown black. But here's what's going to happen. Okay, let's go for it. I'm going to buff in highlights. It's getting glossy. I'm going to go this way to raise it. I'm just raising what's under there a little bit. But do you see where this is going? How wonderful this is going to be? You can buff it or not. You can, you know, if you want that matte black, like if, if you're a dyed-in-the-wool steampunker, you know, you might want that matte black to stay on there. But if you want, like you're more of a bohemian style or Victorian style, or you kind of like the dark look but you want to romanticize it a little bit, then you know, raising the color is great. You could even take this up underneath a buff wheel and remove more of it, which if I had mine up here, I would probably do for you and show you, and you'd probably get some really awesome effects that way. But that's how it goes. Um, here's another piece that I've already done some. This is my, my Bohemian Filigree. This one is on the website already at bisuboutiques.com. And um, maybe I'll just buff it a little bit more, get a little bit more highlights in up here. There's so much detail in this piece. I can't tell you guys how much I love this piece. It's one of the favorite ones that we carry. I am never without these down here in the workshop because they're awesome. And I'll never be without this one either because I just love this rusty black. Um, here's a mount that I buffed up. This is very, very matte when you get it. If you set this with a light cameo, a light colored cameo for contrast, it would be awesome. I don't know, a flower, I don't, well it covers it, no, not that, but um, maybe a resin flower that fits in there, or one of our 25 by 18 acrylic art bubbles, and an image under there, which we have plenty of them, that would be a good idea too. Here's the bat, look how rusty he comes in, he really looks grungy and rusty, this is how he came straight from the platers, just like this, but after I buffed him, look at that. See those coppery glints coming in through his belly and the ribs and his wings? Is that awesome? Either way, it depends on what you like. This could be good, or this could be good. It's, it's up to you. You have options with this. Here's another one that just came in. You can see the, the cool old rusty look. See, it's got brown, it's got black. Now if I take and I buff this, what's going to happen? Let's see, because I haven't tried this one yet. We got, I don't know, it's somewhere between 15 and 20 styles. We got the little propeller. You guys like the little propeller for steampunk, and we have it in the rusty black. But you can see how this goes. You know, if I had a little bit more time, I'd work on that more. This might be a good one to get your Dremel wheel out and buff. But go easy with it. Don't bear down on it, because you might take it all the way back to the original brass, and you may not want to do that. Lift it all up. But that's the rusty black, and now how cool is that? Now this, I didn't bring a lot of the chocolate ox down because they're still working on it. It just came in last night, and they're trying to get it sorted. But this is how it comes in. It looks like this. And it looks pretty much like brass that you have uh, maybe torched or thrown down in LOS liver of sulfur already and maybe buffed out yourself. But now you don't have to because we have it. It's just a very... Um, very chocolatey look. There's no highlights in it. It's it's um, all one color, and that's why I always kind of hesitated to do chocolate ox because um, our brass ox has a lot of different high and lows and highlights in it. But I don't.
don't know. I think the time is right. This this is going to look really good in a lot of the bead caps and the flowers and stuff like that. So I thought, well, we'll get some filigree and stuff from this and, and experiment with it and see what you guys think. But here's what happens when you buff it. So you can buff this stuff, too. And you can raise highlights in this stuff, too. So, you know, you have options. If you like this really brown look for the chocolate ox, it is. It's just like milk chocolate. It's the color of milk chocolate. Well, I see you can lift it. And it's it's permanent. I you know it's not going to wear off. You know unless I'm I'm using this this has a chemical in it that you know when you rub it it takes stuff off and so then that's what does it. It's good to go just like this. But if you want to lighten a little bit, you can do that. And that's kind of pretty. I kind of like it lightened it just in the middle and letting the dark on the outside. So there's some ideas with that. So you might want to check that section at Beastie Boutiques later and see what Shelly got loaded into it and. Uh, I may be doing some of it yet tomorrow as well. Um, another thing, here's something that you can do with the rusty patina. I'm going to move this back. Um, I was just playing around. I went to the nail salon. Well, I didn't get my nails done, but I went and got my hair done the other day. And they had this stuff from OPI, which is a very well-known nail polish. Um, that's a crackle finish. Well, you know, you can get arts and crafts crackle finish, but I was intrigued. And I said, shoot, I wonder what that would look like over some stuff and she goes well you know she gave me a little discount here take a bottle home so I bought some white and I put it over the rusty black we have this feathery centerpiece in rusty black it's on the website now and this is what happened as you can see it cracked a little bit but I think for optimal results you know the OPI needs to go over more OPI or at least nail polish so you know what the hey but you could do this with Gilder's paste you don't need to buy that ten dollar bottle of nail polish um, or actually it's 12 retail I think um, you could do this with Gilder's paste so if you wanted to whitewash your rusty black patina you could do that and it would look something like this and then I hung a little tassel of some gunmetal chain that we have here and then I started working the neckline and I'm not done yet with this I'll have to finish it but I put brass ox in here and gunmetal together chain and then I'm going to work this chain like we talked about you know neckline treatments working them and then, you know, Anna Fierer's flowers came in a couple weeks ago. I told you about them in the New York video. We finally got them on the site today. You want to read about Anna. Anna makes these beautiful flowers by hand, all herself. They're just so amazing. And anyway, we're going to be carrying her flowers. But I thought, now what if you took this and put this like here? Just off to the one side, you know. Has a motif on that. I kind of like that. And you could even like wrap some pretty um, fiber through here and kind of pull that in. Now this is just paper and I think on a necklace it'll be fine if you don't treat it but like if you want to put it on a ring, cool on a ring, then you're going to have to decoupage it. And I'm still exper experimenting with media on these to see what's really right uh, we're putting some beacon laminate on the site today. I don't know if that's going to be it or if we're just going to do straight old Mod Podge or what, but I will update you on that. But we're going to do some great stuff with Anna's flowers. But I just wanted to show you. I just thought that might look kind of cool, you know. And maybe put a couple little beads hanging here, some fiber through here. And there you go. So anyway, that's pretty much it for this week. I wanted to introduce this to you. And I also wanted to let you know that Bisu Boutiques also has a backroom store now at Etsy. And you will find it under Bisu 1441. You will not find it under Bisu Boutiques. It's B-S-U-E 1441. And some have said, well, Brenda Sue, why didn't you put it under Bisu Boutiques? Well, once you get there, you will know it's Bisu Boutiques because I'm very free about saying that it is, although I can't have the link at Etsy to my regular standalone site. Um, our logo is there. My face is there, so you'll recognize me. But I left it Bisu 1441 because for 14 years that was my name at eBay. And at this point, we're kind of pulling back on eBay and going the Etsy route because Etsy's where we belong. That is the artisan mar marketplace, and we felt that you would enjoy finding some of our shop surplus and Z stash and my one of a kinds. And I may put some of my teaching pieces in there too, so you can buy them and have them for your own. Um, so anyway, 
I'm starting to load it. There are some cool things from our trip there. There are some bulk lots of raw brass and some other things. I may put a little bit of rusty patina in there too. I don't know. It depends on what Shelly pulls out. But come and visit us at Etsy and also at bsuboutiques.com. We appreciate your business. We're glad you watched the videos. If you have any questions about the rusty black patina or chocolate ox, please do let me know and I'll be happy to help. And I'm really looking forward to working with you and with this product in the future. And one last thing I'm going to show you is this is a bracelet that I made a couple of years ago out of manipulated brass. This I home patina, this is um, vintage right here. And I took an X shaped filigree and I bent it around this piece here that we sell on the website which is like a Victorian arts and crafts period dragonfly and foliage and then these two I put on to that with jumps bent them much the same as this kind of concept you know and then you know put on a toggle and hung a little bead well this stayed toasty brown for a long time last week I went up to see Linda and Opie uh, at Burn Offerings the O'Briens who wrote Metalcraft Discovery Workshop uh, we go visit them once a year and um Linda said, put some color on that. So I took some of Opie's paints that he had lying about, and I did. I put some color on that. And is that not five and dime? This is just, just fabulous. I mean, it just took this bracelet from being cool to being wonderful. And I don't even know if I could bear to ever sell it. But anyway, it's just so five and dime and wonderful. And our five and dime challenge is going to start July 8th. So if you're interested in that, go to the Facebook page and read about it. And you can participate in that too. But the color makes all the difference. We're going to be talking more about color on uh, metal, metal paints on um, filigrees in the weeks to come. And uh, I will probably be bringing this line in, but I'm not saying what it is just yet because I'm trying to firm up the deal. So we'll see. Um, it's a little hard to get. So anyway, I thank you so much. You could do this with Gilder's Paste too. Why not? It'll work just fine. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you next time out.